Imagine you're falling. You're totally falling in love. Have you ever truly loved your work, your team? Love. That's a really strong word with a really strong meaning. Can we talk about love in our company, where we have to perform and deal with all of these challenges? During business transformations, we are often asked, like, what makes it successful? What are the factors? And there are these obvious things, like structures, processes, planning. And we are raised in a system that values hard facts, KPIs, EBIT, data. Emotions, maybe even seen as a bit dangerous. Don't get me wrong, like all of these rational things, they are necessary, yet they're not sufficient. For a business transformation to succeed, you need to connect the mind with the heart. And we see the strongest moments of change when love is alive. So let's start with the power of purpose. George, 35, change expert. Some years ago, I was invited to give a talk about business transformation. As usual, I give insights about theories, research, and about what influences people's motivation. At some point, I decide to show a video which I found shortly before. It is a short movie with stories about a plumber in Brazil, a carpenter in India, and a construction worker in Kenya. All tales have one thing in common, the power tools of Bosch. The episodes vividly illustrate situations in which these products help people around the world to have a better life. One of the scenes shows a man who uses the device to build a filter. This way, a family gets clean water. I look around the room and watch the audience while the video is playing. People are staring intently at the screen. After a minute, the movie is over. But what happens in the room has a much longer effect. Silence. A silence which makes you understand that something powerful is underway. Some people have tears in their eyes. That was a very touching situation because it says something about why do I come to work every day? We want to do meaningful things. We are driven by purpose. And it doesn't motivate me coming home saying, you know what, honey, today I raised the EBIT by 0.001 one percentage. <laughs> But it motivates me coming home and say, today I made a consumer smiling. So we as companies, we should be like highly interested in this deep meaning of work because it's about money. According to a Gallup study, only 15% of German employees are emotionally bonded to their leaders or their organizations. It's resulting in an estimated economic damage of 122 billion euro every year alone in Germany. And we see similar numbers worldwide. And it's so striking to see people working close to their purpose It's resulting in higher job satisfaction, better customer service, higher quality, sheer better business numbers. So, when does your heart jump at work? Mary, 45, Agile coach. I'm moderating a workshop with a leader and his two teams. I have been coaching him and his teams for several weeks at this point. They have been working on their collaboration and trying to solve their conflicts in several sessions. He is engaging strongly, leans into the discussion and talks intensively about how to solve the problem. But it feels like 
the teams are stuck. And it feels like that the people are not able to come out of their shells. During the workshop, the leader is becoming quieter and quieter. He's listening on observing his people. And I can feel that something in him is forming. Suddenly, he, he approaches me and tells me something I didn't expect at all. He says, you know, I think I am part of the problem. They are looking at me to get approval, but it's not about me. He goes back to the teams and tells them, I trust you that you will find your way and your best solution. What do you need from me? The atmosphere changes completely. What just happened? People are starting to speak up, to gain self-confidence. They feel seen and heard. Global collaboration, very fast, very complex. And it runs against a system that is based on hierarchy. How old do you think this org chart is? <laughs> By now, it's over 100 years. 100 years. Our org charts still look the same. And I think we all can agree that our business environment has radically changed. There is a study of the Boston Consulting Group saying if your business complexity is raised by six times, your organizational complicatedness is raised by 35 times. That's a tremendous loss of performance, and it's rooted in this thinking of hierarchy. Let me put it a little bit of like black and white. Like I have a ma I'm a manager, I have a team, I make the rules. The more complexity, the more rules. And we see that in our company in an increasing amount of boxes, of layers, of bureaucracy. It's estimated that it costs company worldwide every year $9,000 billion. So leadership cannot be about hierarchy. It's about setting a strategy. It's about inspiring. And it's about empowering teams and let them do their job. And for that, you really need to like people. <laughs> Actually, you need to be a people lover. Michael, 52, project manager. It's Monday morning, and I'm taking part in a digital check-in with my team. We are all working from home because of the pandemic. The colleagues are talking about their weekends. They're all sharing the happy moments they had with the families and friends. And they talk about the great things they want to achieve during the upcoming week. And I ask myself, will I show my mask again today? Will I gloss over my real experiences until there is nothing left of me? This phase is difficult for me. I have problems at home, and I can't manage my work anymore like I used to. Is it all too much? How can I get back behind the steering wheel and manage the situation? And what will the others think of me if I don't? Suddenly it hits me. I'm so sick and tired of putting on this face every day. I unmute my microphone and start talking. Good morning, colleagues. Today, I'm going to share something about myself I haven't told you so far. It's not easy for me. For months, I have been very nervous, and I can't concentrate well anymore. I feel scared, like I'm drowning. After two minutes of sharing, the colleagues are getting active in the chat. I'm reading lots of kind and warm messages. And I start to feel safe that I can be myself here. And I feel a huge weight is lifted from my heart.
at work, we often think we need to be bulletproof, always positive, always energized. But what if I take my mask off, if I don't feel that way, making myself vulnerable? And this pandemic situation brings us outstanding difficult topics at home, at work, and it's kind of literally all melting in each other. Making myself vulnerable in front of today's mostly digital teams, I need to feel safe. And we know from research that teams that have this psychological safety perform best in business numbers. For example, ranking highest in sales numbers. And it means that I can be who I am. I can express concerns without fear. And I can give and receive compassion. Let me put it a little bit different. Like this superhuman, super positive attitude may hinder further business success. And I want to quote the words of Brené Brown. She said, vulnerability is not a weakness. It's our greatest measure of courage. You've just heard stories about purpose, moments of serving and connectedness, and what power lies in compassion and vulnerability. All of these were moments in which the head connected with the heart. Moments in which real change happened. In these moments, you might start to fall, to fall in love. And this is where transformation begins.